Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with another model video. Today we'll be building, finishing and reviewing the Ertl 172nd German half track from World War II 251 bridge layer edition. The US owned company had this beautifully preserved in plastic, I'm guessing a vintage somewhere around the late 80s throughout the 90s when this was minted. Older moulds obviously, either made in the United States or uh, Mexico. The box has it dubbed as a Pioneer vehicle set with four styrene light grey runners and uh, a fairly silky and thin decal sheet imported from Italy. The instruction sheet is black and white mono uh, toned print along a large sheet in multiple languages and very clearly laid out with uh, numbers and order of instructions. The track being in multiple pieces did come across as being intimidating though it looks like everything was together and clear enough to tackle this build for all ages or skill levels. I was a bit annoyed by the stamp of the logo printed on the underside externally of the vehicle inside of inside so that had to be scraped away. The gates are very thick leading after a cut removing a fairly large nub and the styrene is very very soft which had a couple of thin parts snap. I used a single sided ultra fine nipper to remove the majority of the parts which did a very quick and easy going clean up job. All the parts would have a very fine guiding pin or guiding hole on the other side. The holes would protrude all the way through, sometimes being visibly seen externally after being assembled. Generally very thick and a lot of the detail is uh, raised, which is a hallmark of the 80s style of injection moulding. Marked out with a pen, we had some very heavy sink marks luckily located on the inside of the model however this is an open top with interior detail and quite a few uh, very heavy and very thick injector pin marks with a little bit of work all of this can be removed and not so much of a hassle the first step starts with the bottom of the vehicle and setting up the internals of the seats the crew benches and a little bit of detail of our driving wheel, the gear sticks and brakes which is a nice touch even though the majority of this will not be visible followed by the wheels and the tank tracks. This is normally very intimidating or considered unpleasant due to the tediousness of cutting out cleaning each piece and stacking them up against each other but with how solidly the wheels glue into the suspension and undercut and placing the correctly measured out tracks around the circuit they click into place well enough with a bit of sanding look acceptable it would be nice to use an aftermarket cast piece a 3d printout the same set or utilize a far superior modern uh, German half track and add the more interesting detail like the bridge layer pieces on top however I'm going to continue with this project out of the amusement and interest of more vintage attempts at models as such too invested at this stage. The rest of the hull detail and outer stowage is slotted into place with fairly okay gaps and fitting. I did have to use some Mr. Dissolved putty and a very fine Q-tip to fill in corners and small holes so lights would not pass through. After drying it was a tad difficult to sand those areas flat as most detail is raised. By folding some sandpaper in half and strategically wiping it down and horseshoed stand sanding sponges I was able to get the task done without any ghoulish detail. Nicest enough fit 
and no detail removed. The final sewage light headlight machine guns were uh, added. The guns are a tad thick and a metal or 3D printed or cast aftermarket alternative could be swapped out and it's appropriate enough that you can buy a little sitting 70 second troops and uh, sit them inside do a diorama terrain anything like that the whole model was hit with Mr. Surface uh, primer to see if I didn't uh, cover anything that was obviously going to pick up through paint it looked fairly good and went immediately to undercoating it with Guy Note Oxidize Red. As I was reviewing a few products and to shake things up a bit, I utilized the small 12 volt very cheap uh, compressor and a 0.5 mil opening airbrush. Building upon this, I selected a few gradual sand and desert tone colors to give a modulation shading effect spraying with a very low PSI of around 11 and thinning these paints about two three part thinner to paint got very soft edges and had a fairly easy amount of time to get a smooth gradient finish looking at the box art and refusing to dig up any reference material whatsoever the pastel colors seem very fun so we stretched the extremes of the shades going out to near cartoony colors like an orange all the shadowed areas were darkened with clear liquid black to provide some sort of definition and detailing all hand painted areas were picked out with a fine point brush and other lacquer colors such as uh, tire black uh, burnt iron for tank tracks and metals gun metal wood handles silver and the whole lot for the camouflage i decided to be a little creative and get those very tight edges by utilizing mr hobby weathering pencils and backing it up and touching it up with makeup pencils for those very fine brownish lines. The model soon came to an end by soaking the decals and sliding them across with a clear coat previously and sealing them in gloss. Had no issues with the decals, even with the age, they reacted very well in water and slid almost like it was new. Applied a few washes, a little bit of pigment, and after a few days drying, sealed it in multiple coats of lacquer matte clear for a very deadpan look. It's been a few months since I've moved houses, worked on a few very complex and heavy intense projects, and getting used to my new studio space. This mental build was very attractive to just dig my teeth into, build and throw out as quickly as possible, yet it was quite a lot of fun and didn't really stress or push me far at all. I can honestly really say anybody can attempt this and get a reasonable range of results, though due to the interest of a German early bridge layer where they would have to rock up ahead of the formation and set up the bridge by hand is a very novel yet historically interesting idea. The finish is okay. It seemed to be very popular in the armor groups on social media. I thoroughly dig it and really like it. I think using weathering pencils in a harsh tone to make very thin camouflage marks work totally well and we'll use this method again if a camouflage pattern does call or require for it. It was just a lot of fun to be experimental, played with some shading, played with some products, played with some thinning ratios that I'm exploring at the moment and with the rustic mistakes and little rush jobs I've done here and there, it's a good enough tank, happy to put it in my collection, happy with the effort in general, yet not a masterpiece and that's it. In conclusion, Love the kit. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. Check out the reference materials and links to social medias in the description below. We'll catch you guys next time. Thank you for watching.